All right, gearheads, we are coming to you live from the North Texas Auto Expo in downtown Dallas, Texas. A little bit of a rebranding, but we are going to take you around the entire show floor. I've already done one of these videos pre-recorded, so if you're coming to this late, be sure and hit that subscribe button so that you can see our more detailed video in horizontal format, better for TV, edited, more of that fun stuff. But we are at the show. Let's go ahead and show you everything on the show floor. The doors just open to the public. We are at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in downtown Dallas, Texas. And I'm gonna do my best to walk you through the entire show. It took me an hour before. Let's see if I can do it here again. Uh, starting in Chevrolet, this is my vote for the SUV of the year, the unofficial GT Garage Talk SUV of the year. This is the Chevy Trax in both of the top trims, coat top trims, if you will. We've got the Active, we've got the 2RS. These vehicles uh, start at 22,000, and you can see this one is 25,000 as it sits. So a very good value. Uh, in 2024, very much like these vehicles. I've driven one, they're fun to drive. Uh, and then speaking of fun to drive, we've got many a different Corvette. We've got one of every flavor for you here. This is the standard Corvette. This uses uh, the naturally aspirated V8. Yes, they did move it back behind the drivers. It's no longer in front of you. But this is the Track Monster. This is the Z06. So this uses the naturally aspirated uh, flat plane crank, 5.5 liter V8, the most powerful naturally aspirated flat plane crank V8 ever produced. We are in a convertible here, so I can't really show it to you ever in a convertible. That's where the hard top goes and retracts, but it's very hard to see the engine on the convertible versions. And then we've got the last flavor, last variety in this electric yellow. Uh, this is the first ever hybrid Corvette, the first ever electrified Corvette, first ever all wheel drive Corvette, first ever, depending on how you have it in what drive mode, first ever front wheel drive Corvette because it can drive in what they call stealth mode, which is full electric, which there is no mechanical connection between the front electric motor and the rear gas motor. So yeah, you can drive this around as a front wheel drive Corvette uh, in certain situations at low speeds, trying to escape your neighborhood maybe early in the morning uh, before firing up that V8. This uses the same V8 of the normal Corvette just over there. It does not use the flat plane crank of the Z06. This is called the E-Ray. And this uses all the bodywork of the Z06, so it stands out in that way. It's a little bit wider, a little more ridiculous looking when it comes to overall width and uh, performance. But yes, this is a fun vehicle. Uh, can't wait to sample one of these. So far, I have only driven the standard Corvette over there. We had a convertible version. Shifting gears a little bit to something without gears, we have the all-electric Equinox. RS. This is the first time I've seen this vehicle not behind barriers. It is locked for the show, but this is said to be one of the two most affordable all-electric vehicles from Chevrolet when it goes on sale. They were promising originally that it would start around $30,000. That price has crept up to about $35,000. This being the RS is probably going to cost you closer to $40,000. No pricing information yet, but they are aiming for just over 300 miles of range. Plenty of cargo space in it. This is the electric Equinox. Over here we have the gas Equinox. So this is the outgoing model. When we were at Chicago, just a few weeks ago, we got a video of the new 2025 gas-powered version of the Equinox uh, that looks much more rugged, much more boxy and off-road ready, which brings us over here to Traverse. This is the Traverse as it exists right now on showroom floors, but this right here is the 2025 version. You can see just how much more boxy and rugged and tough it looks. 
This is the first time Z71 has ever been applied to the traverse line. You can see we get the red tow hooks because red tow hooks mean you can go off-road. We get some underbody protection. We get some off-road wheels and tires. And we say goodbye to the 3.6 liter V6 that has been powering the uh, traverse since its introduction. This gets, I do believe, a 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder let's see if they give us any specs yep 2.5 liter turbo four 328 horsepower 326 pound feet of torque and up to 5,000 pounds of towing so this is more capable and more powerful than the v6 version it replaces and we've got a few videos already on the channel touring this one i do believe let's see i haven't tried opening it yet it is locked for the show uh, but you can check it out. You can see just how much more boxy and rugged it looks all the way around versus the model that it replaces. I love that they've got them side by side here so you can really see the differences uh, between them. As we come around to the back, even the back gets a fairly uh, substantial upgrade over the version over here. So I really like it. it. It really looks good to me. I can't wait to sample that 2.5 Turbo 4 definitely makes a lot of power, definitely gives it a more of a, an appeal to me than the outgoing V6 version did. It is still body, or not body on frame, a unibody construction and a front wheel drive bias, but of course this C71 is all wheel drive. Moving back from there, we've got trucks, 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 and more trucks. We've got the 1500, this is the high country, all blacked out. We've got the Z71 Trail Boss. And then back behind it here, we have the ZR2 2500 HD. You were just here? Why, why didn't you come see me, man? Um, but yes, it, this is the 2500 HD, perhaps the most capable, off-road capable, heavy duty pickup truck on the market that is not the Ram Power Wagon. That thing is in a league of its own with its solid front axle, disconnectable sway bars, and all that fun stuff. This uh, pickup truck was updated for the 2024 model year. We saw it first at the State Fair of Texas here in Dallas last year, followed by this show here last year. And yeah, new updated styling. And then we, here we've got the chrome look of the uh, pickup truck. So we had blacked out high country over there. I do believe this is an LTZ with all the chrome. Coming over here, we've got Colorados of different varieties. We've got the Z71, we've got the Trail Boss, and then we've got the most off-road capable in the ZR2. This one's got those DSSV Multimatic shocks, all kinds of off-road equipment. It is a lot of fun. I really like this desert sand color. Over here, we've got the Chevy Tahoe built right here, uh, not too far from where I currently am in Arlington, Texas. These are about to get a full redesign, or not a full redesign, but a mid-cycle refresh, I should say, for 2025. New front bumper, new looks, uh, and you can finally get the Duramax uh, baby Duramax diesel under the hood in a Z71, which is an option I have been dying for. One lone Malibu here to show that Chevy still does make cars outside of the Corvette. Uh, depending on how you classify the tracks, it really is more of a crossover. But there is the Chevy booth. At any point in this video, since we are live, uh, let me know down in the comments if there's something you want to see, something I did not spend enough time on. I can go back to it talk a little bit more about it like this trailblazer trailblazer got updated looks for 2024 much more in line with the bigger blazer so very nice updated look here uh, we sampled one on the channel go check those videos out we're gonna walk back here to the corner again so I can get to the entirety of the Toyota booth as we work our way back across uh, the show starting with the fun trio of GR vehicles from Toyota, Gazoo Racing. We've got the GR86 up front, the GR Corolla to the right, and the GR Supra to the left. That GR Supra does have a manual transmission. That was a new addition for 2023. And I have to ask you guys, what is wrong with you? Sales of the Supra went down like 50% from 2022 to 2023, which makes no sense because they finally put a manual transmission in this vehicle for 2023. 
y'all should be buying these up. This is an excellent vehicle that we've tested on the track. It is worth every penny. It is so much fun. And you can see all the bracing up underneath the hood. Yes, it is a BMW inline six engine. Yes, it is a BMW built vehicle, but it is so good. Over here, this is a vehicle built in partnership with Subaru. This is the GR86. It is so fun, it is so affordable. We need more vehicles like this on the road. I mean, look at this, 22 MBG, price tag of under $35,000. Fun rear wheel drive. This one even comes with a manual. Like this, there's so much good about this vehicle. More people should be buying this. You could get it with either a Toyota badge or a Subaru badge, but the Toyota version comes with this very fun, very aggressive duckbill spoiler. And then the GR Corolla. We spent a week with one of these. We road tripped to Dallas with two kids in the back, tons of luggage uh, it, because it is a hatch. Uh, you can get a manual transmission and it's just so much fun. This thing is a blast. We've driven it on the track. We've driven it on the road. Three exhaust ports for the three cylinders under the hood. Yes, three cylinder. This is the only GR vehicle actually made by Toyota because GR Supra is BMW and that is built with Subaru. And coming over here, we have got the new big three row crossover from Toyota. We've got the Grand Highlander. This thing, I like it better than the Lexus version, which we will see later when we get to Lexus. This is the Grand Highlander. This is the limited trim. And this is the platinum trim. This is the top trim. This has a uh, hybrid powertrain under the hood. It is a lot of fun. You can see it starts at 43, but this one being fully loaded, 56, 528 all kinds of fun stuff. We've got all the electrified vehicles back there, the Prius and the fully electric BZ4X. Do you want me to go back there? Let me know. Then coming over here, we have the new 2025 Toyota Camry. First time seeing it here in Dallas. Did see it at the Houston Auto Show as well. So it's not the first time in Texas, but a very clean, very updated look that I like very much. Uh, very much resembles the updated design of the Prius. Never in a million years did I think I would say the Camry looks like a Prius and that's a good thing. But here we are, very good looking. We did a full deep dive of the one we saw in LA last fall. It was a blue XLE. Go check that out if you want further details looking inside it because obviously it's behind these stanchions as is this new Toyota Land Cruiser. I actually do have a video of this one coming to the channel very soon. It'll be the first video outside of my uh, edited full tour video. This is based on the same platform as the Forerunner, or the, uh, yes, Forerunner, but the Toyota Tacoma and uh, shares a lot of interior and exterior with the Lexus GX, though it shares the powertrain with the uh, Tacoma uh, top trims. It has a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder hybrid powertrain uh, shared with the top trims of the Tacoma, but you can see 112.2 inch wheelbase. Uh, this is the essentially the top trim. This is the Land Cruiser, Land Cruiser trim or grade as Toyota calls it. Very fun. We have a full tour already on the channel if you're just dying for Land Cruiser content. Holly and I looked at the base model uh, 1958 edition at the Chicago Auto Show. It was a black one. Definitely go check that out. Pricing has been released for this vehicle. It will start in the mid 50s. So 55,000 and some change. This one, uh, we do not yet know the pricing of, but it's gonna be just a little bit more than that. It's got leather seats and nice appointments on the inside. Speaking of that platform, this is the new Tacoma. This is the TRD Off-Road. It uses a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder, making class competitive horsepower and torque. See, we've got a prop rod holding it up. This one starts at, uh, 31.5, but for the one sitting here, 46.253. So yeah, this is for a base SR, uh, nothing special. This is for the TRD off-road that you see here. Uh, four by four, uh, 
capability, cloth seats inside, manually adjusting, but you do get a power lumbar, which is interesting. And then the best under seat storage in the midsize truck game. Look at that, all of that. And it's 60-40 split, I really like that, but best underfloor storage in midsize pickup trucks. But to keep this up, you actually have to pin or button uh, the seat bottom to the seat back right here. So that is a little odd to me. And then unlike most other vehicles in the class, you can fold the seat back down. I believe the Nissan Frontier is the only other one you can do this on. Can't remember if you can on the Ford uh, Ranger, but this was a feature that many people told me they really loved uh, in the last generation Colorados and Canyons that you can now get here in uh, the Toyota Tacoma. But yes, TRD Off-Road, haven't sampled this one yet, but I recently drove one like this. This is the TRD Sport, more on-road focused, less off-road aggressive tires, same powertrain, but I like that we get the schnoz on the hood here. Um, but yes, very cool, uh, mid forties for this one as well. So off-road TRD, on-road TRD, we're still waiting on the TRD Pro, because it is going to use that hybrid powertrain, which is a late availability. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Coming back here, I have to show you this. The Toyota Tundra in the new Terra color. This is the exclusive TRD color for 2024. And yes, this is the truck of Texas as voted on by the members of the Texas Auto Riders Association. So very capable, very fun off-road pickup truck. I've gotten to sample it on-road, off-road, really like it. You can see we've got the Sequoia, which is based off of it right here. Actually less interior space in this in all three rows than the Grand Highlander. So if you want a big, comfortable three-row vehicle from Toyota, maybe skip the Sequoia and go look at Grand Highlander unless you want a body on frame capable vehicle. They've done a lot of stuff to make up for the fact that the battery is underneath the third row of seats here, including these sliding seats. You also have a multi-tiered system uh, back here. They've got the uh, shelf removed so it doesn't walk away during the show. But uh, yeah, multiple different levels here so that you can store stuff in the back. But it's something like 11 cubic feet of space behind these rear, rear seats, which is less than half of what you get in Chevy Tahoe, which is the sales leader of the class. So this is really just built for off-road capability more than it is actual three-row utility. So why you would get one that isn't a TRD Pro, that's a little bit lost on me. Forerunner soldiers on for 2024. You can see it gets the Terra paint color as well. And we are expecting, but no, no details as of yet, that for 2025, we will get an all new one, similar to the Land Cruiser, uh, running the same platform. I bet this one will not get that hybrid powertrain. This will probably get the 2.4 uh, turbo four and not get that hybrid powertrain. That'll be the big point of differentiation between them But uh, we'll see time will tell over here. We've got Subaru. We've got the WRX Remember that red GR 86. Well, here is its Subaru counterpart. This is a Subaru BRZ On the other side is the Subaru Impreza hatch over here is the Crosstrek wilderness in the middle is the Forester wilderness and this Forester has already been, um, its replacement has been announced. It is here at the show. We'll take a look at it here in just a moment. Many people are kind of up in arms because it strays from the Forester DNA a little too much, they feel, and it went a little bit too mainstream. Uh, we'll check that out here in just a moment. But yes, Forester Wilderness, Crosstrek Wilderness, and the OG Wilderness, the Outback. I love the geyser blue. And we'll go ahead and pan over here now to the 2025 Forester. A lot of people are saying the back end looks like a Mitsubishi. I can't argue, it does. But uh, they still kept true to the big windows, the great visibility of this vehicle. So a lot of people are saying it just does not look like a Subaru to them. Definitely doesn't look like a Subaru uh, Forester to them. They say it looks like a Honda or a Ford. Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts of the 2025 Subaru Forester? 
And as we come here, the puppies have not yet arrived, but there will be puppies here. There are always puppies. Have you been to an auto show if the puppies weren't there? I mean, seriously, guys. But we'll work our way over. A big surprise for me was the fact that Stellantis, parent company of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, actually showed up uh, because they have pulled out of all auto shows this year. This is a local dealer effort to get vehicles on the show floor, and they've got everything. So very impressive that Stellantis was able to show up and show out here at the show, show everything that they have as an option for you. Did not expect to see them here. They were not at Houston. They were not at Chicago. And them being missing from Chicago is actually quite huge because it would have been the 20th anniversary of their Camp Jeep indoor test track. And they just missed it completely. So uh, I go into more detail in my full walkthrough, but we've got fun vehicles here like the Ram TRX the SRT Hellcat powered uh, Durango, which is the last vehicle I believe you can get the Hellcat powertrain in because the Ram is being replaced for 2025, going to the twin turbo Hurricane inline six. Uh, the Charger that we see just on the other side of that Red Hornet, that has already been discontinued. So that is no longer with us. And uh, yeah, we're just seeing the death of the big V8. Ford soldiers on. Uh, with their V8s and the uh, Ford F-150 Raptor R and the Mustang. Uh, Chevy still makes V8s for the Corvette and their pickup trucks, but uh, that, that's about it. V8s are slowly dying off and it is very sad. Speaking of Ford, we pan around from Stellantis. We've got the Ford booth here. They do have quite a few EVs on display. We've got all the Mach-E's right here, the Mustang Mach-E. I really like this eruption green. We saw one in Chicago with bronze wheels. Oh, it looked spectacular. We've got baby Broncos over here, the Bronco Sport. We've got full-size Broncos over here, all that fun stuff. The new 2024 Mustang, both in the V6 and the GT trims got a blue one back there we've got a simulator that you can get in line for and experience then yes we've got the electric mustang in the shining blue box and coming over here the big news for 2025 moving forward for ford is the new ford explorer so on screen right now you can see the current ford explorer that was introduced to us for the 2020 model year it got a mid-cycle refresh to look like this this is the 2025 Ford Explorer. There are four trims now. Gone is the Timberline. We get Active, which is what this is, essentially the base model, ST Line, ST, and Platinum. So four trims, two different powertrain offerings uh, of the EcoBoost variety, one more powerful than the other. The ST gets the most powerful. The Platinum gets the option of that ST powertrain. But otherwise, cleaned up looks both inside and out. Just a Good little morning, bit different. Dallas. Welcome over to the different Ford look back here. Here of our auto show incentive. And different if interior license, as well. I'm going to get away from the speakers. There's only so much I can do with these. My goodness, very loud. Uh, we'll work our way over to their pickup trucks. We've got the Maverick leading the way. This is the Lariat trim. We've got an XLT back there, and then we've got the Ford Ranger. I say this has got the best interior in the midsize pickup truck segment and the best, most comfortable back seat in the midsize pickup truck segment. I will go ahead and peek inside since I've led into both of those things, show you the interior. We actually have dual glove box storage in this one, which I really like, that big screen in there. If you get the lower trims, you actually get a mechanical gear selector. Higher trims get the electronic gear selector. Moving around to the back seat, my only gripe and complaint back here is that it is a 100% uh, seat. It isn't 60-40 split, and the storage is not as good as what Toyota offers you in the Tacoma, but it is the most comfortable and I think most roomy back seat in the business. And then we have the 2024 or 2023 Ford F-150 trimmer and the 2024 Ford F-150 trimmer. 
Ford has simplified the lineup. You only get one fuel tank size. It's the bigger fuel tank, which does decrease max payload. Uh, and then all trims get distinct, unique headlights, uh, distinct, unique grills. They've updated the logo in the front. It is a high contrast. That's actually a black, on, black and white logo versus the chrome and blue oval of that one right back there. But here in this shot, you can really see uh, the two and what they look like and how they've differentiated them. Uh, all different trims get different headlight packages as well, slightly different uh, iterations. And then they updated the taillights as well. They did offer a new door in the tailgate, which we don't have on this model here in front of us. But uh, yeah, Ford is continuing the tailgate wars that I think they started with their drop down step. Uh, but yes, new, new tail lights in this and new all digital interior on uh, the F 150s. So, full digital gauge cluster, full digital screen inside. No changes to the F 150 Lightning, which is what is right here. It soldiers on for 2024, essentially unchanged because it has different exterior styling anyway, and it already had a full digital gauge cluster, no matter the trim. So, there is the Lightning, but here we have outgoing 2023 models this is the only 2024 on the showroom floor here at the north texas auto show and i like it uh, i'm getting mixed reviews we did a deep dive into a red lariat trim from the chicago auto show if you're itching for more content on the f-150 definitely go check that out uh, is worth looking into but really like uh, what ford is doing again simplifying their lineup uh, to make the most of profits. As we pan around from there to here, I have to talk about the Camaros. So Camaro, my favorite vehicle, 69 Camaro, which that red one is back there, my favorite year. This one in front is a 68, uh, but absolutely love it. The owners here in North Texas got together. And so we've got representations of every generation. Here we have first gen, second gen, third gen oh we don't have a fourth gen here surprisingly did not catch that fifth gen and sixth gen over here so all kinds of different Camaros minus the uh, catfish Camaro as it's come to be known but you can check out many different generations not all the generations of Camaro Coming over from here, we have the Kia booth. We've got Forte, we've got Soul, we've got Seltos, and then the vehicle I drove here in, the new all-electric Kia EV9, the most affordable three-row electric vehicle on the market. The other options in the three-row EV segment are gonna be the Rivian R1S, Mercedes EQS SUV, and the Tesla Model X, but you had to option a third row. Yeah, anyway, this one is in a matte blue paint. It's in the land trim, very similar interior and model uh, spec to the one I drove here in, uh, but yes. And then we have the new 2024 um, Sorento, which gets new styling for the 2024 model year. We've got the new EV6, and the new Sorento yet again in another uh, trim level. And then we saw in Chicago the 2025 uh, Kia Carnival minivan, which borrows heavily from the styling of this new Sorento. Right there, we've got Nero, we've got Sportage, we've got Telluride. I mean, Telluride, this is their best selling three row SUV. Uh, they can't make enough of these. This uh, is a better three row SUV than the Sorento. The Sorento is now standard three row, uh, but this is by far the icon of the brand, so much so that they are calling the EV9 the electric Telluride, uh, just to get you to buy it. So one thing I will call out, this one is in a gloss paint to, compared to that matte blue we saw earlier. The gloss paint gets this digital tiger face look. Uh, it is a unique lighting pattern and you can actually change that lighting pattern but I do believe that is an additional charge after the point of purchase through the connected Kia app. 
say what you will about that. Really like the interior of this one, the brown and the black. It is a really nice look. Again, the one I drove here was gray on black and was just a little plain and sterile, but I really like just all the brown in this one. This is the 2023 Carnival, like I said, at the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, Kia showed off the 2025 version, which gets an updated exterior and an updated interior as well. So definitely go check that one out. But this one definitely has some of the coolest seats in the game. You can see we have an extending thigh support here. These are like um, airline, first class airline seats. They go side to side and forward and back. I'm not gonna mess with it one handed with my phone in the other hand, but it's so comfortable. This is the best two row or three row vehicle for adults. It is a great chauffeur vehicle. It is a great road trip vehicle. The problem with this version is it uses a very thirsty V6. You can see 19 city, 26 highway, 22 combined. Uh, the new 2025 version is offering a hybrid powertrain, fixing my one big gripe of the carnival. Over from here, before we leave, I do want to call out, uh, we've got all the work vehicles here. We are in North Texas. There's a need for work vehicles here, but the one I want to call out is this. This is the Bright Drop EV. Bright Drop is a new company from General Motors who owns Chevy, GMC, Cadillac, and Buick. This is their new Bright Drop electric company for work vehicles. And you can see this is a 100% electric uh, work truck. FedEx has signed a big contract uh, with Bright Drop. You're going to start seeing these on the road a whole lot more. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, very spacious on the inside, but uh, I, I find it very fun that they even brought it here to the show. You can not climb in and experience it, but we'll be seeing these on the road. These are set to rival the new Rivian made Amazon Prime delivery uh, trucks that you're probably already seeing on the road. So I think EVs make sense for delivery vehicles because they're mostly staying to a set route, uh, a set number of miles. And I think that is one way we really can uh, work on fixing the emissions overall. We'll go ahead and come over here. We have got the full Mitsubishi lineup. The Outlander, the Outlander plug-in hybrid, the Eclipse Cross, and the Mirage. That's it. Uh, these two vehicles right here are the two Outlander uh, models. One is plug-in hybrid, the other is not. And uh, they are basically rebadged Nissan Rogues. That's all I have to say there. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you want to know more, uh, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'll go back. Uh, Buds Builds, what looks like junk to you? The Bright Drop EV or the Mer uh, Mitsubishis? <laughs> let me know. Over here, we've got Honda. We've got the new Accord. We've got the Passport Trail Sport. We've got the Civic. We've got the HRV. We've got the Ridgeline and CRV, but I'm working my way back to what is at the back of their display. And this is their first fully electric vehicle. This is the Honda Prologue. This is built in conjunction with General Motors on the Chevy Blazer EV platform, which unfortunately currently has a stop sale. So I don't know if that applies to Honda, if they've started uh, actually moving these to customers yet. Uh, I have a full detail inside and out view of this vehicle from the LA Auto Show. So if you wanna know more about what this is like inside and out, definitely go check out the video on this. Uh, I did a kind of double video. They had the Prelude concept uh, there as well. So just showing off their electrified offerings moving forward. Um, Honda did partner with General Motors to make this, but have since moved on. I do believe they are dissolving that partnership moving forward. Yeah, I like and then this. Honda has their pilot SUV here as well. Moving on from Honda, we have Nissan, we've got the Titan, we've got the Altima, we've got Sentra, Rogue, but not the new Rogue. Uh, we've got Frontier with a camp back in, uh, camping tent back in the back, really like that. Uh, we've got Pathfinder Rock Creek, the most off-road capable version. It gets about a 5 8 inch lift over the standard uh, non-Rock Creek Pathfinder. You can also put premium fuel in it, get more power out of it. 
So it's fun, it's capable. We've driven it off-road a couple different times uh, and it is big and roomy on the inside. It is like a cave on the inside. Very impressive how much room they have on the inside. We've got Frontier back there, another Rogue Kicks and the new Nissan Aria, their first fully electric EV. They didn't partner with anybody, they built it themselves. So Toyota partnered with Subaru and Honda partnered with General Motors. Nissan said, no, we got this. We'll do it ourselves and they made this. While we were in Chicago, we got to check out a very insane Nissan Aria on 39 inch BF Goodrich KO2 tires that drove from the North Pole to the South Pole by a husband and wife team dedicated to show what EVs are capable of when you get outside of the EV stigma. So pretty cool. Coming over from there, we have Lexus. And this one right here is the RZ. This is built on the same platform as the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra, both of which are here. Uh, this one is in this beautiful baby blue color. We tested one this same exterior color, but we also had a baby blue suede interior that just made me gush. If you wanna see that, we have a couple reviews of that on our channel already. Otherwise, we've got NX, RX, ES, LS, LC back there behind those guys in the convertible, LX behind that, another RX right here. I'm working my way here to something. The uh, Lexus version of the Grand Highlander in the TX right here, and then the Lexus GX. So we spent time going around the Lexus Land Cru or Toyota Land Cruiser. This is Lexus's version of it. It gets a six cylinder under the hood though, unlike the four cylinder turbo hybrid in the Land Cruiser, this gets the same twin turbo V6 from the Toyota uh, Sequoia and Toyota Tundra. 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, lots of power, lots of towing capability. I believe max tow of 9,000 pounds. You can get three rows of seats in the GX. You can only get five seats in the Land Cruiser. I'll go ahead and show you here. We've got that seat tilt, tilted and tumbled forward. We'll do it here. This one is only a two uh, row vehicle, but the third row of seats we did check out when we were at Houston earlier this year at the Houston Auto Show. <clears throat> the third row of seats are really more of jump seats, emergency seats more than anything. And then the last Lexus I want to point out is the IS. I really like any Lexus that is rear drive biased. So that would encompass this IS, that GX, the LX behind the TX, but not the TX, definitely that LC convertible, and the LS sedan way over there in white on which the LC shares a lot of components. Those are my favorite hands down. Uh, all the rest, yeah, they're nice, but not for me. Then I wanna bring you over here to the Sewell booth because they have two surprises here in store that I did not expect. The first of which is this, the Ineos Grandier. This is a British uh, owned company, a French built vehicle with a BMW powertrain. So yes, we get the inline six BMW powertrain under the hood of this. They even call out to that right here, powered by BMW. They even call out to that here, British company, German powertrain. So there we got. Uh, the owner uh, of the company is a British billionaire knight and he really loved the original Defender, so he set out and built something in homage to that, and that is exactly what we have here. Uh, this is uh, the Fieldsman trim, uh, field hand trim. I I've got a full detail video coming on this one, but very customizable. It is $85,000 aspect. We'll go ahead and show you right here. Field Master and it is 84.695. Like I said, we do have the BMW inline six powertrain in it and locking center differential, um, full-time four wheel drive, but you can do a manual transfer case here. Tons of switch gear in this one, both above you here 
and buttons and such on the dash. We have the Safari windows manually opening uh, roofs, glass roofs above the driver's seats, uh, which makes the front seats very fun. The back seat isn't much to write home about. Uh, these doors really remind me of a G-Wagon. And then the back of it kind of reminds me of an H1 Hummer. It is a 70-30 split opening rear hatch that you can get into like this. And I was told it holds a British pallet. So worrying about the size of it, they set it to make uh, use of a British pallet can fit back here. Like I said, British billionaire dreamed this up in a pub. The pub was called Grenadier, so they named the vehicle after it. And I do believe he has since bought the pub. Now, again, British billionaires, a uh, whole lot of fun. Uh, our American billionaires make um, Tesla Cybertrucks. We get this. Uh, but here you can see this is the Fieldmaster trim. We get the Grenadier there on the hood. The looks of it. Do call into mind the original Land Rover Defender, a little bit of G-Wagon, a little bit of Land Cruiser, a little bit of everything all banked into this. But like I said, inline six under the hood from BMW, very fun, capable powertrain. The other surprise that they bought, this thing was at Pebble Beach late last year. This is the design direction Infinity is headed towards, and I really like it. Uh, this is called the QX Monograph. It is just a concept just to show off the style and design that the brand is going as a direction. You can see the piano key lighting here. They, uh, I've got video coming in our full tour, my edited version of the full tour, uh, where you can see just how those light up, just like piano keys. You can see we've got some fun puddle lamps down here and 24 inch wheels, very cool. Uh, very interesting lighting and grill elements up front here. And this is the first implementation of the fourth generation of the Infinity logo. So this is actually a 3D logo. You can see it actually goes in and uh, better represents that Infinity road going off into the horizon. Slightly different look. You have to really look at it to see the difference between uh, the traditional Infinity logo. In fact, we'll go ahead and come over to this QX60. See, they've already got the new logo right there. But the old logo came to a point which, uh, yeah, okay, that works. But this one better resembles uh, the road dipping off into the horizon, driving off into Infinity. So no point, new logo, point, old logo. And then this being the Sewell family of brands, it is a dealership here in North Texas. We get the Hummer EV, SUV, and pickup truck as well because they do also represent uh, GMC and a few other premium brands like Cadillac. So lots of fun stuff here to see at the show. Those are all the brand new vehicles, but if you come to the show, go all the way back to the right and you will see, we've got it here leading us on the way, the EV test track. EVs have a stigma. I mentioned it when we were talking about the Aria. They don't work for everybody in every use case. I get that. I drove here in an EV. I had some charging issues. I highlighted that on my Instagram story. Go check out and see what fun I had just trying to get here in my EV. I'll have some fun trying to get back as well, I'm sure. But for people who don't travel long distances often or are looking for a commuter vehicle for a second vehicle, EVs would make a perfectly fine option. And here you can actually experience them for yourselves without any pressure to buy, which is the big news here. And you will also see there are some vehicles and some brands back here that aren't represented anywhere else. So worth peeking around back here. <clears throat> we've got Nissan, we've got Kia, we've got Ford, but some of the brands that are represented back here that aren't anywhere else in the show. We've got BMW, we've got Mercedes EQ, and then we have Audi. 
So various different vehicles back here in the EV test track area that you can check out thanks to local dealers. And you can even experience on the expanded indoor test track. So you can take a full ride along in a Ford Mustang Mach-E, F-150 Lightning, Mercedes EQ product, BMW i product, lots of fun stuff. We've got uh, Nissan Aria back there, Kia EV9 is back there, a couple of Audis, the e-tron, the uh, Q4 e-tron, all kinds of fun EVs back here. And uh, from the looks of it, right now, opening day of the show, you pretty much just walk up and uh, get in your vehicle of choice right here. We'll go ahead and take a look and see what this BMW is doing. Hard acceleration. And we'll watch this Ford F-150 Lightning. The F-150 Lightning in perfect conditions can do zero to 60 in under four seconds is what they claim. Uh, our good friends at Texas Truck Channel say that it is still slightly slower to 60 than the F-150 Raptor, but we'll see it take off here in just a moment. Here they go. Again, this is a slick concrete floor, so you can't get the best acceleration, but that is all wheel drive all the time. So you do get that. Here we have the Audi e-tron GT. You can also get that same platform as a Porsche or Porsche, if you will. Let's see them do an acceleration pull here in just a second. They're probably walking through exactly what they're going to do with their passenger, but uh, can't really see much of it over that orange wall. Here they go, the easing forward just a little bit, and <laughs> that one makes the most exterior noise of any of the other vehicles here. Uh, I, I think that's a fun option. I'm sure you can turn that off. I have not gotten to experience the e-tron GT, but we have experienced the Q4 e-tron, which is the black one right in the center of the screen right now. So there you have it. That is everything from the 2024 North Texas Auto Expo. A so. lot to see here. This has been 46 minutes so far, and I didn't even take time to get in any vehicle or experience anything. There are vendors here you can check out. There are different things you can do. You can poke around in most of the vehicles. Most of them are unlocked and are available for you to sit in, fully experience. So if you are in the market for a new vehicle and in the area, it is worth coming out here and checking out. Tickets, I do believe, start at uh, $15. There are some discounts out there. You can make, make your way out here. If you are in the market for a new vehicle, there's nothing like experiencing vehicles for yourself. If you do want to see more from us, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time a new video drops. I will be going to the New York Auto Show. Let me know. Was this useful to you? Do you want me to do a live from the New York Auto Show? I'll do it if there's enough interest in it. Otherwise, I'll stick to my pre-recorded, edited uh, walkthrough tours of that show. Lots of fun stuff expected for the New York Show, so I can't wait to see what's going on there can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, here on YouTube, many different places, GT Garage Talk or gtgaragetalk.com. Thank you so much for joining with me. Didn't have a lot of uh, conversation back and forth, but looking forward to that potentially in future videos. Until next time, bye.